Guys, this video is brought to you by our friends at Ridge. This incredible wallet, it's light, it's sleek, it's industrial, and you already know, it seriously changed my whole pocket game. Now is the time for you to upgrade your wallet. Guys, check this out. Ridge wallets hold up to 12 cards, plus all the cash that you're gonna need. There's over 30 colors and styles. That includes carbon fiber and burnt titanium. It is the best wallet you can buy. And I don't want you to just take my word for it because there's over 30,000 five-star reviews. I admit I was skeptical at first, but once I tried it, I never went back to my old wallet. And for you guys, there's no pressure. Test this thing out for 45 days. If you don't love it, send it back, get a full refund. If you decide to keep it, there's even a lifetime warranty. Ridge is offering up to 40% off on select products site-wide right now until December 22nd. So go to ridge.com slash chale. Be sure to use the promo code chale or just click on the link below. The toughest guy in the sport. The toughest guy in the sport needs to be a category, by the way, because there's some guys, I mean, you're painting them with the same brush. It's the same guy. It's that same type. It's that same attitude. But the toughest guy in the sport won't get any credit for being the toughest guy in the sport. He'll only get credit if he becomes champion. Now. Brian Barberina might be that guy. Brian Barberina might be the toughest guy in MMA. Now there, there's a category. I mean, I told you there's there's a there's a group of them, right? You got your Jeremy Stevens, Darren Elkins, who never gets cra Darren Elkins might be the toughest guy in this part. Benny Darouche. But what is toughness? It's one of those things that's a little bit harder to find. So here's what we're gonna do in our sport. RDA, the hardest schedule of anybody I have ever seen. Oh my goodness, and it's not even close. He's going to go fight Bar Brian Barberina. That, that might be a match for toughest guy in the sport. By the way, good news, guys, three rounds. You don't want that for five. You want it for three. Brian Barberina versus RDA, they might just be fighting for the sport's toughest guy title. With Darren Elkins on the outside saying, we get some size on, I'm going to come challenge you. But here's what we did do in our sport. We didn't call it toughest guy. We called it baddest. So the baddest dude in our sport. Now that comes with an attitude. That comes with a performance. That comes with a skill set. That comes with a willingness. And no, I don't mean the attitude is that you're a jerk at all. It means that you're willing. You're a willing competitor. Khabib would be a great example. Khabib does not have that edge type attitude. He would qualify as the baddest or the toughest because of how willing he was. Anywhere you wanted to set that cage up, show on and take on anyone that you wanted to bring. And as a matter of fact, Khabib is even doing that as a coach. He wants Islam against the absolute hardest competition, not the ones that pay the most. It's a very rare mindset. It's a different mindset. Barbarina and RDA might be fighting for it. Now, we do do, we do, do baddest, or at least we did do baddest. We have a baddest. George Masvidal. I have nothing short of enjoyed watching George Masvidal maneuver, negotiate, and navigate his career and his brand against the machine. The machine isn't just the promotion that you're with. It's also the media, it's the fans, it's it's, it's everything, and you and it's just you and your idea. And I've loved watching George do it. I am getting to a spot where I'm, of course, open. There could be a great plan that I haven't seen. I get fish hooked. Of course, I'm open to that. Or he's not aware of the spot that he's in. George, George is in a very unique position. George Bosvidal got called out by Michael Chandler. Are you guys aware of this? This isn't recent. This wasn't like he did. That must have just happened. This was a little bit of time ago. A couple of weeks. Great call out by Chandler. Masvidal needs to be called out. I don't think that he knows that. I don't think that he likes that. Like, in the neighborhood, in the streets, that means something different. He's, he's got some of that mentality. Masvidal needs to be called out. Somebody needs to step forward and say, I'm not scared of you. I know what you're capable of. I know what you've done. I know that you're fighting Scott style, right? That's a scary style to fight. He's not looking to take you down and annoy you. He's looking to knock you out and hurt you with kicks and knees to the body in the process. He, he, he's going to 
ridicule you in the media leading up to it. You're going to have a whole bunch of eyeballs. Masvidal, whether he knows it or not, needs to be called out. That would tremendously help the interest in his next fight if it's against somebody who called him out. Chandler did the right thing. For many, many reasons, Chandler did the right thing. Now Masvidal decided he didn't want to do that. And I think Masvidal's problem, I think, he didn't say this, uh, was the 155. I don't think anybody wants to have to go put it on the line and risk it at that stage in their career with a guy who's smaller. There's just a perception issue. That's what I think is a great call, and that's an incredible fight. Incredible fight. Not to mention Mike Chandler goes in that same category, right? He's handsome and he's a wrestler, so you kind of you kind you kind of stereotype him into one category. Go watch his fights. He is as brutal as Justin Gaethje. He's as brutal as Dustin Poirier. He's right there with all those guys where he's going to put it on the line and step in there. He's going to look to do damage. He's going to take it in the process. He's going to live with the result afterwards. I mean, he qualifies in that list of tough guys. I'm talking about what is Masvidal going to do and why do I think that he's in a tough spot? Well, look, there is a reason the BMF has never been resurrected. There's a reason that the BMF himself has fought, but the belt wasn't up. I'm not positive that he knows what that reason is. I think that he does. I'm not positive that he does. The only re the reason I say think as opposed to positive, because there's ways that that belt could have gone up. There's ways that he, as the BMF, could have made it a title fight, could have demanded it was a title fight, could have made it a title fight. So there's a part of me, either really nice guy, company guy, maybe he is, or he doesn't know why that's not being contested. And I think, I think he doesn't know. There's also a very tough spot that you run into in your career with your contract. If you have a beautiful enough contract, it can start to limit the things that you can do. There could be a, a really great fight, really interesting fight. It just, it can't go in a co-main spot. That, that's a pay, that's a pay-per-view fight. As a matter of fact, it's a main event fight. Great, then put it in a pay-per-view in a main event. Well, I can't. I can't. I have clauses, I have agreements, I have contracts. I've only got 11 pay-per-view dates. A lot of them are spoken for, so now let's limit. I've got seven. I've got seven right now that are still unspoken for, and that's just in 2023. But I, I got to put titles up. I got to. Or is it 25, whether it's Amanda Nunez and Isabel, I mean, it doesn't matter how we're going to do this. I've got those spots. That's where this fight needs to go. And not to mention, that's where your pay needs to go. For this kind of pay, you need to find this kind of a fight. And for this kind of fight, I've got to put it in a pay-per-view and i got to put it in a main event. I cannot undercard with the, these kind of commas and zeros that I'm added to. Oh, and by the way, I can't do that because it's not championship match. So we all end up in this hard spot, right? And th these problems, like the little riddle that I just confronted you, these come up in Dana's life four and five times a day before lunch. He solves them. I'm just sharing with you guys that it is a bit of a riddle. It is a bit of a position. And George has done such a great job. There are many ways where he has now limited his ability in what he can do next. I don't know if he knows that. I don't, I don't know if it matters to him. I don't know if he cares. But I think in George's mind, he's either going to find that title fight, which is super important if you're him. Super important. I know I'm repeating myself, but it was almost a riddle. I just want to make sure you guys stayed with me. He has a contract so beautiful that it has to go into a main event of a pay-per-view. You can't go into a main event of a pay-per-view if there's not a belt up. Now, there is a way, considering a guy that he's got heat with happens to have the belt. If that guy just brings that, we've satisfied absolutely everything. Bob's your uncle and off we go. Well, what if the guy doesn't? All right, great. We, we, we know with my kind of contract. We know that I'm pay-per-view and we know that I'm going to main event. We've already said it, but it's got to be for a belt. Here's the good news. I've got one. Yeah, but we're not going to put that up. And, and that's the part where if George understood this, he'd find a way to make them. I can't, I can't come any, I can't go any more specific than that.
Or if George does agree and he agrees with every word that Chael says, and there's nothing that Chael knows that he doesn't know, but he also respects why that's not being done and he's not going to push it. That, that's on the table too. But if you're not going to do that, okay, great. I mean, Tell him what we're not going to do actually did help me get a little bit closer to what we are going to do because there's all sorts of things that have to be fulfilled and they get a little bit complicated. So finding the right opponent who doesn't have a belt, it can be done. It was done in George's last fight. It was against Colby Covington. That was a main event of a pay-per-view. So the biggest fights that we've had are pay-per-view main events that don't have the belt, contrary to what your memory tells you. So the biggest fights we have don't have a belt. It can be done with the right opponent. I mean, Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier, both, both times they did it, just to remind you, we're record setting. In the top 10 list, they fell in there. Conor has to knock off one of, his, one of his own records and replace it with a new one, but he did it both times. There was no belt up. Colby versus Mosvold, there was no belt up. Whatever Connor does next, it's going to be a main event. It's going to be a pay-per-view. There's going to be no belt up. Well, wait a minute, Chael. You just said for that kind of money and that kind of a treatment that it has to be. Okay, great. But there's, there's ways around it, right? You, you, you've got to find out what the rules are. Then you've got, to fig you've got to figure out the extenuating circumstance, the way to get around that. One thing that would be helpful for George Masvidal is if somebody calls him out. And I don't think when, when Masvidal dismissed Chandler that it was fully dismissal. I believe that was Masvidal making his move and he was waiting for Chandler to respond as a way. I think that's what he was doing. It was very helpful. That's a great fight for one, but it was helpful. And if Masvidal doesn't agree, if he doesn't see it that way, he needs to rethink it. He needs to rethink it. I know outside of the cage, he didn't want somebody calling him out. That comes with something from his block. But if you're going to do it inside the cage, very helpful. Because he doesn't want to look like a bully. And one thing about when you are the BMF, Put you in a bully position. Even if you're a vulnerable and sweet guy, put you in a different position. Perception of reality. You get called out, all of a sudden you just got victimized. You're going to be the baddest dude in the world and you become the victim. You got something really powerful there. But it's really important at all times within this, uh, this sport, you understand your spot. And sometimes they don't go together. I've got a spot, I've got a contract that is reserved for champions, but I'm not a champion. What do I do? Do I manipulate? Do I double cross? Do I find a way to put, make them put the BMF up? Has anyone ever told me why they haven't? Or what is it that Chael's talking about? Right? I mean, sometimes there's just questions where you got to dig into it. You got to look into your own career, but it's extremely important at all times that you know what the landscape is for yourself. George is a beautiful spot. When I tell you he's in a tough spot, he's in a tough spot because there's certain things that has to happen, but it's a tough spot because it's very lofty and it's very beautiful where he got it. He should be very proud of it. But how he plays his next move needs to be calculated. And when you're looking at that ingredient, I believe that answering a call out as opposed to making one puts you in a better position.